For a while, at UFC 241, it looked like history was gonna repeat itself. DC was hitting Stipe Miocic with bombs, using good clinch work combined with hand control and dirty boxing, just like in the first fight. He was having a lot of success with his strategy and Stipe just couldn't find his rhythm. He couldn't find a way to hurt DC and make him pay. Before we analyze the masterful adjustment that changed everything, let's look at the first fight between Daniel Cormier and Stipe Miocic. This is a very important sequence because it will eventually lead to the knockout. As he's going for the underhook, he's also loading up his right hand. Stipe sees DC changing his grip and he tries to get out of the clinch. But since his left hand is defending a possible level change from DC, the right hand has a clear target. This time, he gets out, but only just. In the next sequence, Stipe tries something different, but it would eventually lead to his demise. Instead of getting out of the clinch when DC goes over under, Stipe grabs the single collar with his right, while his left is still low. Right there, he looks safe because he's so close to DC, but feeling safe at heavyweight is a death wish. DC can now reach Stipe before he exits the clinch, since he's still holding on to the single collar, and he never saw it coming. Possibly because of eye pokes? Possibly not. Either way, Stipe needed to make adjustments for these types of positions, and he did. In their second fight, Stipe was always ready for DC's punches. Maybe he absorbed a lot of them, but he saw them all coming as well. He relied on his chin, that's for sure, but he had a better awareness of where he was in the clinch. But still, it looked like DC would catch him up eventually and knock him out again. Even if Stipe was defending DC's strategy slightly better, he still hadn't found a good offensive solution for it. So far, DC was having loads of success with his tendencies, exploiting some of Stipe's weaknesses. Stipe needed to find a way to exploit DC's weaknesses, and he found those in DC's tendencies. DC, against his coach's advice, didn't try too many takedown attempts. He was putting his hands up and extending his arms in almost every exchange. He was going for straight punches when Stipe was just out of clinching range and for hooks and uppercuts when Stipe was in. And if we look at that, we realize, if Stipe is not in the clinch, he can evade pretty much all of DC's offense by keeping his head off the center line. So how to keep your head out of the center line while attacking DC's vulnerabilities in the exchanges? The answer would lead to a possible exploitation of DC's tendencies. But there are not many attacks that work for that, especially in a heavyweight fight past the third round. Stipe is not much of a kicker. He can't really knee him because his head is still pretty close to the center line, and it essentially gives a lot of grappling opportunities to DC. But he could hit him to the body with his fists. Plus, when DC expects the right hand, he dips to his right and extends his arms to grab, and that means He's going right into a left hook body shot. There it is, the masterful adjustment. The new tactic of Stipe Miocic changed everything. It looks simple once the fight's done, but this specific technique gave Stipe a spectacular number of benefits against DC's strategy. It protects him from the majority of DC's attacks out of the clinch. The clinch is harder to get, the straights cannot really touch him. It's taking advantage of DC's one-dimensional game plan. Since DC is not going for leg kicks or takedowns or hooks at that distance, Stipe can be relatively safe in that position, even with his head exposed and his left hand down. It also triggers the reaction he wants from DC. He's extending his hands in the direction of the center line. He's watching the right hand and so he's dipping to Stipe's left. It gives him an undeniable offensive advantage, considerable damage, it creates openings to the head. It diminishes DC's body movement, which is a huge part of his game. We often talk about head movement, but if you can't move your body, your head will stay pretty stationary. And for DC, his body movement is vital to defend punches. That's how he absorbs most of the power without getting hurt. A lot of times I see punches and kind of roll with them so I don't take the full brunt of the punch. So if his body hurts, it will be easier to hit him clean. And finally, that left hook is distracting DC from his main concern, the right hand. And that leads us to the final sequence. DC is applying his normal strategy while advancing. Stipe evades the right hand while moving his head on the outside and snaps the left hook. That one hurts. They're close. DC doesn't see much of it coming because it passes below his arm, away from his vision, while he's expecting something else. Stipe follows up, 
far beyond his target and crunches DC's body. He winces in pain. Stipe sees it and immediately begins his next attack. His one-two surprises DC, who finally forgot about the right hand, his brain too focused on the catastrophic blow he just absorbed. I didn't see it. He still reacts mostly the same way. He dips to his right while posting, but this time his right hand is covering the body. The target is clear and open. DC is not expecting it. His body is beaten up. He can't move his head enough to roll the strike. For Stipe, the target is more stationary than before, more stationary than it's ever been and he doesn't miss his shot. Right on the chin, concussive blow, and the fight's over. Unbelievable. During four rounds, Stipe tried to do something and couldn't. It took a masterful adjustment to exploit DC's tendencies, and as soon as DC tried to adapt to the new threat, Stipe came back to his initial plan, his specialty, and he reclaimed his title in a legendary way. Congrats to Stipe Miocic, He's always been one of my favorite fighters. Props to Daniel Cormier also, one of the best fighters to ever do it. A 5'9 chubby heavyweight fighter once was the baddest man on the planet. And that will always be a reminder for me that anything is possible. And as far as UFC 241, it was one of the greatest cards of the year, hands down. Hands if you like this video, you know what to do. If you'd like to see more breakdowns, you know what to do as well. But just in case, subscribe. And I'll see you next time.